This week on And You Don't Stop, we talked to Tanya Fields in the South Bronx about the Black Project and food justice in the hood. And on Rooftop Live, we had the honor of hosting Rod Digger, the legendary lyricist from Jersey. The South Bronx is on the front lines of the struggle for environmental justice. Our friend Tanya Fields has been putting in work to bring healthy foods to the community for a while. We took a visit to Mothers on the Move and got to build with them. So the Black Project is about creating economic development opportunities for marginalized women and children of color through you know, the local and good food movement. So essentially what that means is like, we're trying to kill two birds with one stone. Ultimately, it's about economic development. It's about creating economic opportunities that are women-led and that positively affect their children. But our way of doing that, our medium of doing that is through food justice work. And that's really intentional and informed through the fact that one, when I moved to this community, one of the things that was very glaring to me was all of this land that was just laid fallow it was sort of a, um, it, it really kind of threw me back to my time in Harlem, which I had gotten gentrified out of, and that's how I ended up in the South Bronx. And it was all, you know, in the 80s and the 90s growing up, there was all this land available, and it just kind of sat around and sat around. And before you knew it, gentrifiers were coming in, you know, speculators were selling off this land to create housing for gentrifiers. You know, the one thing that ails the South Bronx, our environmental justice issues, is probably the one thing that's kept us the most sheltered from gentrification. But it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen here. And so I started looking at alternative models around the world, you know, of how people get investment in their community without necessarily having a ton of capital to buy up swaths of land. And the way that you've seen this done time and time and time again in places like, you know, Brazil and in Latin America is that people start to actually cultivate the land. They start to grow food on that land. Simultaneously, when you're talking about people who are resisting, people who are struggling, you know, you're generally talking about people who also are dealing with food insecurity. So of course you take that land, you cultivate it to feed your family. That's a human right, right? And so I started thinking about that too, thinking about my own interactions with the welfare system as a young mom and going this, you know, trying to get my degree, you know, and going to the welfare office and at 10 o'clock in the morning, this woman, this mother is giving her kid Cheetos and strawberry quick. And it wasn't because she didn't love her kids any less than I loved mine, but nine times out of 10, that's what she could afford. Um, and so before there was all this consciousness and we started to actually coin this term food justice, I had been thinking about ways in which, and I wasn't even using that term yet, but for me, back and I was like, how do we get better food into our community and how do we do it in a way that empowers the women and the children that continue to lead our communities and how do we do it in a way that doesn't continue to capitalize gentrification and how do we do it in a way that puts money in people's pockets. The bus, which was uh, sort of lent to us through Wasay Community Farm um, and then, you know, which we're now vying to buy, is a former school bus with a deep social justice history. First it was used sort of as like this sort of um, you know sort of this traveling home for like grassroots activists and sustainability and then it was used for prison bus trips and then we sort of got a hold of it and we started using it to run a market. Um, so I tried to start a farmers market back in like 2010 or something. I got a little bit of funding from Citizens Committee of New York City but I couldn't make it stick. I didn't have the capacity. I think I probably was in over my head. And I couldn't just get the, the, the sort of groundswell from the community. You know, farmer's markets are good, but they tend sometimes, because of the nature of our food system, to price people out of them. So it's great to go to a farmer's market, you see this beautiful heirloom tomato, but if it's $8 a pound, People on food stamps don't care if Jesus picked that tomato. It's too expensive. And so I started thinking about different ways in which we could possibly bring better food into our community because I knew people had been doing it. Like, I, as much as I like to think I'm a genius, like, I wasn't creating something new, right? So I needed to remake some shit that had already been done. So I started thinking about w what models were out there. So of course I go to Google, right? And I type in low income, you know, food justice, all of a sudden, I start seeing fresh moves out in Chicago. This old MTA bus where they're selling apples and organic strawberries on the west side of Chicago, right? I'm seeing, you know, boxcar grocers down in Louisiana. I'm seeing, you know, the name eludes me, but uh, a mobile market out in Detroit. And I'm looking at places like Detroit and the west side of Chicago. And I'm saying to myself, if they can get folks 
to eat healthier food there, right, or more nutritious food there. I know we can do this in the South Bronx. You know, like, th this is a great community where the language is already there. You've got people who already know how to do this stuff, right? So we just gotta harness that. And how do we have that intersection between accessibility and affordability and education? And so we started the South Bronx Mobile Market. We ran a pilot project last year during the winter, because I'm crazy, and our bus kept seizing up on us and freezing, and then we were having issues with the people who lent us the bus, which we still have ongoing. So we're trying to raise the money to buy the bus so that we actually own this bus um, and have it be a real resource for the community. Straight from the Point Community Center in the South Bronx for the International Women's Month edition of Boogie Mics, the monthly open mic the RDAC BX has been doing for the last three and a half years. Our special showcase this month was legendary lyricist Rod Digger, who was in the building and the energy in the crowd was electric. I'm right here with Rod Digger. I don't know if y'all just seen this, you know what I'm saying? She just bodied the set. Tell me how you feeling after rocking in the South Bronx, the birthplace of hip hop. Oh man, I mean, the, I was surprised, you know, it, it was such a, 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 you know, a younger audience, but they were hip, I mean, they knew all the Dirty Harriet stuff, I, I was gassed, like, I, it, it, it just really motivates me to find, like, young hip-hop enthusiasts, and, and that really, like, love and appreciate the culture, and they not just following what, you know, what's on the radio and stuff, like, they're actually out there like seeking you know, good music so I, I i couldn't ask for a better crowd uh, one of the powerful moments in the show you know so i got goosebumps and all that was when you did the joint angela davis you know with the fist up tell us the energy uh behind you know you doing that record well the motivation from angela davis well i mean i've always proclaimed myself as like the leader of the underground with the females even from Dirty Harriet Day with uh, the whole moniker of Harriet Tubman, Harriet Thugman, Dirty Harriet, like all of that comes from that. And I just felt like today in, in 2015, there aren't enough uh, positive black female role models for, you know, hip hop artists and, and, and just people in general to look up to. I, I feel like nowadays everyone, you know, we idolize the, the Kim Kardashians and, and, and I just felt like I wanted to make a statement record to show people, hey, here is a positive influence in hip hop. Here, here is a, I guess a, a aura that I, you know, that I took pride in embodying for a record. I, I feel like you, you know, you got rappers making songs about, oh, I want to be Big Meech, I want to be, you know, all of these other people. I felt like, hey, how about being Angela Davis? That's what's up. I love that record, and. Uh, another thing that I that I find super dope about what you do is you also you mad vocal on social media. You know what I mean? Like folks get to like hear what Rod Digger is on, and I feel like you've been also very vocal about uh, in a way like standing up for the culture of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? And you know, as you saw in there, we really out here in the Bronx, we really try to hold it down. But tell me a bit a bit about you know what I'm saying? What, what motivates you to represent for hip hop culture in that way? Well, I mean, I came up in a time where I think the the hip hop culture in general was a was a very rebellious, a very socially conscious time, and I, I just feel like nowadays artists have it so easy that they don't really appreciate the the grind and and you know the struggle that it that it took to get here. I, I feel like artists nowadays they feel like they can just get record deals and they just become millionaires and it's you know and and life's you know life's a beach whereas when I was getting into the game there were no prospects of private jets and things like that like my my end goal was to host Yo MTV Raps so like I really did it for the love and you know for the culture and I just you know I, I just I'm just glad that there are people that Still, you know that we can pass that on to and they still appreciate it and, and grasp it and it's you know it hasn't just been completely eradicated by you know material things and, and just all of the things that don't matter. Let's go hip hop! Fist in the air everybody! Yes! 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 I'm Angela Davis! I'm Trayvon Martin! I'm Mike Brown! I'm Eric Garner! Put your fist in the air, people! Let's go! Leader of the resistance! 
And it's only for the thick scan Running round this shit land circuit with my bricks, man When it come to spitting, got that six inch And I don't think they know the difference And I'm getting at my wits in And then that real rap kicked in And they wonder how it missed them I'm Angela Davis, I ain't shaking my buns I'm yelling power to the people and waving my guns I be pumping that fist I ain't running from shit. It ain't too many of them broads got the stomach for this. They worry about they stylists. Worry about your talents. Build up your balance. Expand to your palace. Better find you a balance on that home though it won't be as turned up as Howard's. Shit. I'm Angela Davis. And my all black floating through the matrix. They like digger, can you save us? But did lyricism escape us? You one of the few that kept it raw through the ages. You about the culture even more than the papers. And I ain't have to do that fake shit. I love my black features. I ain't trying to get no facelift. I'm Angela Davis. No perm. Mama had that straightening comb or slow burn. They don't know about me, but they gon' learn. They gon' learn how I had the infallible Lauren Hill lighting roaches on the mic. So can we write mess? We not doing ladies night. So rage, we success. We gon' be Nas and Jay. And if you watch with Bust, still his best to this day. I'm Angela Davis.